Hi everyone, this is Leather Ass for Stockspoker.com. Uh, today my friend uh, Matt Amon, who is forced with me, is joining uh, us today to play two tables of 2-4 no limit. And I'm going to start off the first hand with 3-6 suited on the screen on the left. Um, I think Matt, you'd agree, standard opening pretty much any two suited um, on the button. Definitely. And with the ace-8 here, this looks a little to me like he's uh, just trying to isolate the limper. And I'm going to go ahead and just repot it. And if it doesn't work this time, at least it's going to maybe send a message. Because we'd, we'd like to establish sort of a loose, aggressive uh, sort of game. So um, with the king-4-6 flopped middle pair, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make a bet. And it looks like uh, he's on to us here with uh, the ace eight. So there's really nothing we can do at this point. We're just going to have to give it up. And we get min check raise. I don't know anything about any of these players. Um, so I think, what do you think? Start off by just... I would peel and, and see what happens. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm uh, leaning towards as well. And so he checked back. So now I'm, you know, I'm thinking he might have like a hand like King Ten, um, you know, but it could be a draw as well. And I think the best bet is to check behind and just try to get to showdown. We'll make a decision on the river. So the half pot. <laughs> I'm I'm tempted to call. I'm tempted to raise because. You know, this could just, this screams like a lot of weakness to me. Uh, we're going to time and give this one a little bit of thought. What do you think? Oh, I would call. You would call? Yeah. Just out of curiosity. So and I think it's a club draw a lot, messing with you a lot. Okay. Well, let's do it. Wrong as okay. always. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's just sort of a tricky spot against unknowns. I mean, that's kind of one of those situations where it's usually sort of, you know, he's going to be on air. He's rarely going to be on a marginal sort of hand to check raise there. So what's more likely, you know, a bluff or him having basically the nut? So, you know, we're getting a pretty good price to call. So 10-8 uh, suited under the gun. Uh, we're just going to start off by raising it. Uh, queen jack here, I don't really like calling because the buttons, you know, we're not going to have position and the button might just shove something silly. Um, and if I knew more about this player, I might just shove it, but I think the default play is just a fold. And with the 10-8 suited, probably just make a continuation about about uh, three quarters pot. Um, we get floated and we turn a open-ended straight draw. I don't know about you, Matt. I think the play for me is to put him on a hand like sixes or sevens and try and check raise all in. I like that. And maybe, uh, you know, go for a, a river bluff if we miss on, say, like an ace or a king or a queen or really anything that makes the board look scary for him. But this is just a terrible card for the board pairing. This is probably the worst card for us to try and bluff, so I think at this point we just give up. Yep. So, you know, we're tempted to bet out the turn because, you know, you probably get a hand like that to fold, but at the same time, why not try and get more money from that hand? I guess I just got a little greedy. I figured more than likely a card would come where I would either make a pair, I would make the straight, or I, or a card would come that I could bluff him with. So I felt pretty good about go ahead and just going for the check raise, figuring that chances were I could just bluff him on the river anyway. So that was the thought process there. So with the ace king here, we have a, you know, the same guy limps, and so we're just going to bump it up. And with the king four, pretty easy fold. I mean, you could give some thought to squeezing. I don't know. I mean, it's a pretty good hand to squeeze with because it's, it doesn't really have any post flop value, or it doesn't have any value any other way.
So queen eight offsuits, pretty, you know, it's close, but I think we'll err on the side of playing hands for the video, so we we'll just raise it from the button. Usually go for what, any two cards nine or higher? Yeah. So you err on the side. Yeah, I would raise queen nine there, but I would probably fold queen eight. Yeah, that's generally my default too. And we'll just make a continuation bet and hope to take it down. So do you go any two suited? All I would raise that, yeah. Okay. We'll raise up deuce seven. I mean, it's suited. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> I love when my opponents have that attitude. <laughs> but yeah, on the, you're right. On the button, most good players are going to raise any two suited, unless unless the blinds are really, you know, really good players and. Um, you know, are going to make make you pay for trying to steal too much. So it's a three. It's just uh, let me go a little small on the <coughs> on the continuation bet. Maybe go more like two thirds. This is an ace high flop as opposed to three quarters. Just figuring he's going to give up or continue if he has an ace. I don't know. That was my logic. Yeah. <laughs> Does that work for you? Makes sense to me. One thing I've sort of noticed in the forums and stuff just from talking to a lot of uh, players is I, I have noticed a general over-concern with balancing your play. So I, I might get a question after making a statement like betting two-thirds of the pot. Um, about saying, well, isn't that sort of transparent? Because, you know, if you, if they notice like your general, you know, your normal continuation bet is three quarters, but now in ace high flops, you're two thirds, and they're going to know you, you don't have anything because you're just trying to get away with your bluff cheaper. Or, I I get, uh, I I get a lot of questions like that, and they're very legitimate and questions that I've, you know, used to ask about myself and my general feeling is is that most people aren't paying good enough attention to really you know to really think about that and to really exploit that and I just think in general people tend to overestimate you know other people's ability to think on you know and really notice these small little things so I think in general you can just make the same type of play like that over and over and um, you'll be just fine. You know that my that my argument for that might go a little bit more out of the window when you start to get to play, you know, some of the best players in the world. But certainly, at the mid stakes or lower, um, you don't have anything to worry about. I think just sort of ultimately choosing the play that has the most positive expectation in a bubble is is probably best, you know, at the mid to lower stakes games. Just assuming that you're going to sort of always be playing in that bubble because people just won't, you know, won't just pick up on these little nuances. So with the player Mar Eagle, we're just going to sort of uh, give him a little green mark as maybe being a little soft um, after watching him limp in. And, you know, that could change, but you know, there's definitely a high correlation to limping preflop and being a bad player, so or at least a weakish player. I do, I will say, I am starting to notice it more and more. I've actually sat with some of the best players in the world and watched them limp in a six max game, so it's not. Um, something that is 
terrible, but in general, I would say there's a pretty high correlation. So we're going to continue to do what I usually do at the mid to lower stakes, and that's punish the limpers, even with um, junk like king three offsuit. Uh, they just generally just kind of fold too much and like to try to exploit that just by, you know, the logic being is that they're not going to hit the flop off, you know, that often, and we're going to just take it down to the continuation bet. Now, that being said, this is probably the worst imaginable flop <laughs> continuation bet on, so I think I'm just going to give up on it. And maybe if he, if he gives up on it too, maybe we'll take a stab, but I think at this point we can sort of check fold. What do you think? Do we dare try it again? <laughs> Raise it up. All right, let's get in there. I'm going to try to attack these guys. He doesn't look like he's too keen to fold. Uh, he just he did just fold there. Hopefully we get through the, the last guy here. Um, pretty good flop for us, actually, to continuation bet on. I expect this to work pretty high percentage of the time. You know, my hope is he's on, a, he's on a hand like pocket fours or something. Maybe a suited connector. Um, so on the table on the left, AKL888 posts, um, and he buys in for like $212.30, I guess he must have bought in for. Um, I can't imagine a great player doing that, so... We're going to go ahead and mark this. <laughs> Do you think that's pretty safe to say, Matt? Yes. Okay. Um, and we'll just go with the NE2 uh, uh, method on the on the button here <coughs> for video purposes. <coughs> you know, we're not getting dealt much here, so we're going to try to create some action a little bit. Um, you know, obviously we want to keep the educational content high as well, but, uh, you know... I think you know we can all sort of figure out the hands to play pre-flop, and I've probably talked about that enough, so you know that that's not standard for me. So basically, I just want to try to get into some uh, tricky post-flop situations. So quickly, three bet. What's what? Are you, what is your sort of thought here? We do have numbers. Is sixteen six so far? I basically think I would just try and call and flop a set. And go from there. Okay. So what is your plan for the hand on all low cards on the flop? I guess my plan would be to check fold. I mean, it is a weak line, but I don't know what else to do against a seemingly tight player. Yeah, it's close. I think starting off by calling is definitely correct. Um, the thing is, though, with 32 hands, what does it mean? You yeah. know? And we've been isolating so much and kind of stealing away the opportunity to raise. Um I'm kind of leaning towards the side of going broke here. I don't really like check calling out of position. And now he uh, he checks back, so now I'm pretty confident we have the best hand, at least until that turn card, which definitely could uh, have given him like a top pair, top kicker type hand like ace-queen. I think the play to play is the check call. What do you think? Yeah, I definitely think that. The ace-10 here suited here, I'm going to float uh, in position. So on the river, I think uh, if he can shove his stack in with ace-king, then I think then he's a really... He's just going to bluff us. I think we have to check fold here on the river. What do you think? Yeah. Half pot. That really looks to me more and more like he does actually have ace queen. And he's just trying to extract some value out of it. 
Or he has the board so smothered with a hand like pocket queens or pocket tens, he knows we, he, we can't have much. But either way, we don't have the best hand. I don't think a check raise will work. I don't think it, us putting a move on, on it during the hand at any point was going to work either. So I think we probably lost the minimum there. The turn wasn't a fun spot. No. Because we don't know what to do on the river either. I mean, if a diamond comes, is that a good thing? You know? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Now maybe PC, who is a little bit looser than we first had thought. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't going to put too much stock in that sample 32 size. Hands. 32 hands. Especially when we've been isolating every hand. And he's multi-tabling, so he seems like he's a regular. And I don't think a, a regular, like, you know, like that would be playing that tight. But I completely agree. If he was legitimately a 16-6 or whatever uh, we thought he was before the hand, I think just calling for set value and maybe hoping that he checks behind a hand like ace-king or that he has ace-king, you know, and, and checks behind on the flop, and then we um, protect our hand on the turn was probably the line. So we'll give Marty Go a little break here and fold our 3-8 offsuit. <laughs> <laughs> We've done it a few times now. Try not to do it every single time. But. All right, so I think we can mark stay less stay or whatever as being somewhat soft. Limping in kind of has an odd stack size. So what do you think? Should we do it? Squeeze it. All right. That's what I like to hear. You got to show these guys who's boss sometimes. <laughs> I like your attitude. So we get a call in the small blind, which is pretty unexpected. What do you, what's your play here? I think I would just bet 55. Okay. Something. I don't see what else you could do. Yeah, it's a good flop to make a bet on. None of his suited connectors or pairs really got there more than likely. So what do you think here, Marty Gold? We haven't really seen him raise at all. Kind of hard to say what that means for him. I'd like to play a pot in position, which is probably going to end up being a big pot. But if his raises are going to mean really premium hands, then this is a really bad hand to be playing. Yeah. What, what do you like? Because of the poster, I think I would probably call. Okay. If the poster wasn't there, I would definitely fold. So what's uh, what's swaying you? Just the extra money in the pot, or is it? It's more of what what the poster does for people. You know, people go after the poster more. Okay. So maybe that weakens his range enough to make it a better situation. Okay. Yeah, I mean, generally queen jack offsuit is not the type of hand you want to be playing against an under the gun raise. But when you presumably have the incredible post flop edge that we'd pro almost surely have on this guy. I think that we could probably show a profit, I agree. So it doesn't look like he has much, and this guy squeezed so much, he's going to be committed if we try to do anything back at him. We certainly can't call, so I guess the, our charade is sort of over here. But definitely on the loose-ish side, that call pre-flop, but... It takes a really bad player, I think, to make that profitable. Yeah. Which yeah. I think, but he seems to be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, someone's going to end up with the fish's money. It might as well be us. That's right. You can't, you can't get a fold time. on him. 
Don't give these guys time to gobble them up. <laughs> I like it. All right, so King Queen's definitely a hand that we'd like to open with uh, from any position in six max, and pretty good flop. And we'll maybe lower our continuation bet just a little bit. It's a little bit more around two thirds. All right, so another ace, and uh, I don't really see what we're bluffing him off of at this point. And I think we just go into give up mode. What do you think? <clears throat> Definitely. Okay. And we'll come after our friend here. Because even if he has a hand like pocket sevens, I don't think he's going to give up, especially because we already noted that he's not very good. Yeah. Now he's got two pair, huh? Yeah. He's got <laughs> two pair. <laughs> People don't fold two pair. <laughs> they don't. Especially not ones we have markets off. Hopefully the numbers will come in. We come in maybe the last half of the video. We can have something to go off of here, other than just our observations. I know Marty Gold is playing a lot of hands. I know that we haven't had anything too exciting come up. Not exactly. Uh, not exactly uh, getting run over by the deck, are we? No. <laughs> All right, so now some numbers just came in. 36.8 from Marty Gold. I would almost thought it was more. Seems like he's playing an 80 <laughs> yeah. to me. Yeah, it's kind of surprising to me. Um, I guess I guess the play is continuation, but sometimes with uh, with some flops, I just like to check behind and call the turn when I have a sort of weakish hand, and then make a decision on the river. Um, but here, I think we're just going to continuation bet. He folds the flop at 67% so far, so he seems like the type that's going to play pretty straightforward, and he's unlikely to hit, hit the flop hard on that, hit that flop hard given his um, range. So um, what do you say we get a little frisky here? Player King 4 suited. Let's do it. Let's get in there, huh? Cattell, this guy seems like a pretty solid player so far from what we've seen. Yeah. I'll agree with that. You know, sometimes I just like to take any two suited and just sort of three bet. Um, that's a pretty good flop. And one I'm going to play maybe a little differently. I think, I mean, it's somewhat vulnerable because a queen and a jack could mix things up. But we have the, the diamond ones covered. So I think check calling here for our stack is the play. What do you think? I think my okay. normal line here, and this may be wrong, but I think I would just check raise them all in would okay. be my first instinct. Okay. And I think that's that's there that definitely has some merit because there is an overcard that can come. Um, you know, and the queen and jack could be gnarly, but at the same time, we got to think a lot. So much of any of his hands, if he unless he already has his feet, only has one or two outs. So I think I'm going to actually stick with it here and. Now we make pretty much the nuts, so I'm going to, uh, this is tricky because I hate to see him checking behind a hand like Jack's with the Jack of Diamonds. So what do you think of making like a half pot bet? I think that's beautiful. Trying to charge him just a little bit. Yeah, and maybe if he has the Ace of Diamonds, he'll shove. Yeah, and think maybe he has some fold equity. Yeah. And we'll just call it the Queen-9 suited because Wind Water is a little um, short stack. Too bad. Yeah, that is a little too bad. Um, I just hated to see it go check, check. You know, given that we made the flush like that. Um, and with the queen here, I don't see any purpose to bet. 
because you know the hands just don't. You know, I mean, it's sort of a way ahead, way behind situation. Right. Don't you agree? We're not really protecting our hand, and we don't even know that we have the best hand. So, so I mean, it's a it's a different line there with the king four suited, and one I. I take because it also looks like jacks or queens, and he might fire twice trying to get me off. Um, if we hadn't made the flush on the uh, turn, I would have definitely check called, or maybe just check raised all in just to get the rest of his, you know, because at that point he, we're going to be pretty much committed. Um, not a not a common line I think most people take, but I found it to be very effective. And again, I wouldn't do that with King Four offsuit necessarily because, like, if I if I didn't have the flush draw, because um, you know now the hands have a little bit more, you know, his range of hands have a little bit more equity. But whereas some of them that sort of make his hand give us the flush, so I'm not so worried about giving the free cards. It's close. I'm wondering about, you know, we could have check raised all in on the turn and try to get him to maybe bluff bluff again. Mm -hmm. But again, you hate to give the ace of diamonds a free shot. You hate to give jacks and queens, you know, let them check behind and get off cheap when we could probably when we could probably bust them the other way. You know, and betting out is okay too because you want to be able to bet out when you don't have a hand because it is actually a pretty good flop to bet out because, you know, you're repping, you know, a big hand the whole way and it's pretty easy for him to be like, well, ace king's probably a lot of his range and I'll just fold. Uh, seven nine suited, I'm going to go ahead and open. So, you know, I bet out there sometimes for sure. You know, maybe deep, maybe like a third of the time, but I like to play it that way too. And and since you know every video in the world is going to pretty much show you, you know, the option of betting out, because that's sort of the safe line that's going to, you know, no one's going to look stupid about uh, over. So uh, I'm just going to lead out with the seven nine. Um, I, this is the type of flop I might give up on, just because it's so coordinated. Do you normally yeah, give up? I would on give up. Like yeah. These? So since we have a pair, I think I'm a little more likely to want to bet out because now we can at least, you know, make a big hand at some point. And the quick min range, <laughs> I guess we just have to junk it, huh? Yeah, I guess so. No fun. No. Um, but yeah, getting back to that, I mean, the safe play, and you're going to see in most videos, is just bet out there, but... You know, I want to try to teach you guys uh, a few ways to mix it up. So uh, that's definitely a, a good alternative line, I think. And it may ultimately be best. I feel like I've had a lot of success. I mean, maybe, you know, my sample size of doing lines like that isn't huge. But although I do play a lot, so maybe it is. <laughs> but I play a lot of hands like that. So it's bigger than anyone else's sample size, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, so <laughs> um, with the king-queen, my intention here... You know, if if we raise, it's sort of a lot to raise just to steal a little because we're going to be committed. And King Queen is not exactly the nuts um, if he's going to re-raise us. So I decided to just try try to basically play for stacks if we made a pair or or a draw. You know, check raise all in pretty much. Um, but now I think just giving up. What do you think? Yeah. We could have tried the min three bet play, I guess. You know, I love that one. Yeah. I've actually done that in one of my videos, so I think most people know about that one too. Uh, ten nine off. That's that's a standard open, no matter what. From the button, that is.
And I'm going to make this raise just a little bit bigger than Pop because he's a bad player and we have a good hand, so I want to try to get as much money in pre-flop as possible. And uh, what do you think, just standard continuation bet? Yeah. Here? And this guy was pretty short, so I just left him alone. So now we should, it looks like we have the best hand, so I just put a little something there to protect it. So we will see. I don't see any value in betting. <laughs> they always get there, don't they? They do. <laughs> That's all right. We'll let them get there on the $20 pots. Yeah. <clears throat> Just a little bit before this video, <clears throat> Matt and I were playing 10 tables of all 10, 20, and above. So, and seeing some pretty nasty rivers, not going to lie to you. So, uh, not so bad. They don't hurt so much for twenty dollars. <laughs> they can do it to me all they want here. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, what do you think? Raise it up. All Why right. not? And you think we should see about this one? I think I probably would. Yeah, I like it. <clears throat> it's, we got four high. We're not winning the showdown. If it's scary huh? to you, it's scary to them. Yeah. That's my opinion. JS, uh, this guy's on to us. JLS. So you tempting know. just to shove. I know. But he made it so big, and there's like $130 in the middle. I don't know what he could fold. So. I guess. Just junk it. Yep. We gotta play good today. <laughs> We're making a video. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be embarrassing to shove and get called. Aces. Yeah. Flop what were you doing, Leather? Flop ace two two. So maybe you'd suck out. So now what? Um he bets half half pot here. And we picked up a flush draw. I mean it's tempting I suppose, but I I, I would just fold, just I just think. Fold it, yeah. I mean, it's tempting to make a play, and maybe with a better read, uh, we could toss in a raise and try to steal it, and if not, hope to suck out. But um, we don't have that kind of read on this guy yet. You know, a lot of guys will play like a hand like <coughs> King-10 that way or something, and they're probably not going to be too thrilled when they get raised on the turn, but we don't have that kind of read on this guy. Jack-10 offsuit's pretty loose open under the gun, but, you know, keeping with the theme. I'm just playing pretty loose aggressive. Okay, so king queen suited. Uh, we flop top pair on a draw heavy board. Um, just start off by betting out and seeing what comes. <coughs> All right, so the jack ten. I don't see a whole lot of value in betting. Right now, this guy has an infinite aggression level, but I doubt he's that aggressive. Um, you know, we can get money from hands on the turn that don't have any outs, like suited connectors, and or have like two outs, like a pocket fours type hand. And that's probably a lot of his range anyway. So I think uh, checking behind is a pretty good option. Now I think he quickly checked, and I think we should just go ahead and protect our hand at this point. All right, so <clears throat> a little bit of a decision here. Pretty confident he doesn't have a queen or a six. He could have a 10 with a better kicker. That is possible. Um, I, what what do you think? What's your? Feeling? I think it's worth the risk to value bet here. And what what are we hoping to get paid on? Ace high? I guess. I mean, I guess there's a small chance he could have pocket sevens or eight. I let, why don't we go for an over bet and look like represent like a missed draw and maybe he'll call us with a seven. What do you think? Yeah, let's do that. He 
He's not going to think we checked the queen. This is going to be pretty confusing to him. And just hope not to here, get bluff raised. We're just going to fold right out. I don't think we're going to get bluff raised. Um, I'd be pretty shocked. All right. So the logic being, we wanted to make our hand look le is, is <laughs> less like a value bet and more like, you know, a last ditch effort with like King Jack or something that, you know, or maybe a pair of fives that got counterfeited or something like that. Um, and try to get looked up by ace high, try to get looked up by pocket eights, stuff like that. Um, we felt like that was maybe the best chance to try to get value is to make it look like, you know, like I said, we just don't have anything. If we make it look like, you know, a standard sort of value bet, there's a decent chance they'll put us on that and make a fold. And there's also a chance that the small number of times he has a hand like King-10 or Ace-10, maybe we got him to fold. Yeah. I mean, after all, he can only beat a bluff, which his Ace-10 is pretty much, you know, pocket eights at that point. Because right. we either have, in his mind, we either have air or the nuts. The nuts. <clears throat> so we'll open any two suited on... This guy, and I don't really know about trying to steal. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> floated and then squeezed. <laughs> That's what I can see by by doing that. Floated by the 41 V pip and squeezed by this 60 30 we have here. I think uh, there's some merit, and this might be a loose, this might not be positive EV necessarily, but um, for the sake of the video, and, and you know, it's pretty close, I think, to play, you know, a suited... Especially because it's, it's, it's almost certain that Marty Gold is going to play. Yeah. You know, he's just going to call, and then you're going to see a nice three-way pot. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That was the plan. And so we'll just continuation bet this Queen Jack. I think I'm actually willing to get it in with this guy. I would, top definitely. So There's lot, so many draws. Yeah, and sometimes I'll check behind um, because getting check raised does make you a little sick to your stomach, but with this guy, it doesn't so much. <laughs> so we get that min check raise again. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to not bet this 4-7 suited. Maybe if it gets checked around again. So do you like a, an outright shove, or do you like a, a big raise? I just call? big raise it. Okay. I still don't think we should stab on the 4-7 suit. I no. mean, somebody's probably going to have something. To yeah. Do. All right, so we take it down there. <clears throat> I mean, I usually like to take little stabs. Once it goes check, 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 a lot of times I'll stab here. But I just see him, I mean, I see Marty Gold calling with, like, anything. And I see still is maybe calling with, you know, a hand like Eight Pocket ten. Kings or something he might have. So, yeah, and he might just be going for pot control like an ace-10. You're, you're exactly right. <coughs> What do you say, another loose open here? Definitely. <clears throat> All right, we caught a little piece. <laughs> you, you just pumped up his eye house? <laughs> yeah. I think not we'll just check that. it back. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's not the best. Well, shoot. Do we go for a little protection? I still don't think I'd do it. Okay, so... 
Yeah, I mean, maybe if a low card comes, I mean, we'll just try to show it down. Now I like our hand. Yeah. Yeah, on the turn, it's, you know, it's protection, because if you get called, you're pretty much done. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So now we'll just maybe go with about 35. Maybe <coughs> we'll get looked up by a weak queen or something. All right, jack six. This guy's really high. Fold the flop bet. Seems pretty passive. Uh, small sample, but raise it up, huh? Yeah. Maybe one time we'll actually have a good hand. <laughs> yeah. We've gotten a bunch of junk this video. Oh, we flopped a purr. <laughs> <laughs> I'd bet that one. Yeah, I think so too. So about three quarter pot. All right, squeezing every bit of value out of these guys. And Jonesy um, sits in with uh, less than half a buy, and I'm just going to assume that he's a little bit soft. I think we're not going to have time for more than just a few hands. And I think we have to squeeze here. 14-9, um, we don't know how reliable that is. Seems like a multi-tabler, so it might be pretty, you know, like a multi-tabling pro, so it might be a little bit higher than that. So what do you think, make it 60? Yeah. And then we can comfortably get it in with wind water because he has less than half a buy-in and Ace Jack will probably play pretty decently against his range. So the quick shove, not having much success here with uh, making any moves. So uh, I can't call it that, so I'm going to have to fold. Pretty frustrating. Did it pretty quick, almost like, you know, he just shoved all his money into the Ace King or something. That's kind of my impression of that. And with wind, us just making a play, having not work, wind water being slightly short, I think we can pass on the 8 4. You think? Definitely. <coughs> Um, with the min raise here, I, it's tempting to float, and it's just kind of such a junky hand. Implied odds, uh, odds aren't as high with him being kind of short, so I think I'll just fold. 6-4 suited, raise it up in the cutoff. I would say that's, you know, pretty close to being standard for me in the cutoff. If I have really aggr aggressive guys to my left, then... I might rethink that, but 6-4 suited is, you know, you can make a little something with that. So I like to get in there with hands like that, especially if I think I can get position. All right. Well, maybe our loose, loose aggr aggressive image can pay off here. kind of the situation you're waiting for. Hopefully we can do something with it. And so I guess just play it straight forward and start off with a three-quarter pot bet. 
and with the King Ten will raise, so a little unfortunate to get it under the gun. Um, you'd like to get those in the blinds. You'd like to get it in a situation where you three bet the guy a lot and stuff like that. Um, maybe build some history, uh, but that was sort of a nothing situation there. And with King Ten suited out of position, you know we are, I guess, only what four handed in this hand, so. I think that's going to make it a call for me, and we'll just try to play some poker here. We're going to definitely be getting into light, and this guy is pretty loose aggressive, so. Um, not the best flop to really represent anything, so this is one I usually give up on. And so now we have a pair, which makes me, what do, what do you think here, Matt? It's sort of a I think I was probably point. checking call. Would be what I would think. You can check and call. What? What are the arguments? I mean, I guess I, it's just the grab bluff and pot control. I think I, I like betting out a little bit more. We're getting short on time. I wish I we could have talked about that a little more. But I feel like you know he's going to be on you know an ace king ace queen you know king queen type of hand. And so now what I'm going to do is check and try to induce a bluff from him, maybe if he has like king queen or something like that. And if he flops something like quad jacks or some full house or something, I think we just have to pay him the way this hand is played out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think we just call here and hope he's picked up a draw on the turn. So aces, he played that pretty well, I think. Uh, you know, it was a good way to sort of let us uh, have a chance to catch up and uh, you know also give us a chance to make like a second best hand on a board like that he's got to figure we have you know two outs so um, either, or he's either beat or he has two outs so I actually like his play there and I just don't see what else we can do given the way that hand played out um, to get away from that because we checked with the intention of you know trying to pick off bluffs open he picked up a hand like king queen something like that so uh, Anyway, um, I'm going to uh, call it a video. It was nice to have you alongside, Forrest. It was nice to be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, we look forward to hearing them in the thread. And uh, Myself and Forrest will try to uh, answer them as best as possible. Till next time, take care.